One. Stafar Allah al Azim. Stafar. You're changing the birth of Allah. No. It's not your sister next. Your daughter. What's Allah Mustaan? Are you just saying in sequence? Yeah, Allah, yeah, Allah. Daughter, sister, daughter, sister, yes. Your mother, your daughter, your sister. Now, please, no hope. Let the boy do it. He can do it, mashallah. Isn't he? he can get all the credit for it. Your auntie? Just like that? Your mother's, your father's sister? Your, fa your mother's, your father's sister, your mother's sister? Say it properly. Your brother's daughter, your niece, but your sister's daughter? Oh, you were doing real well. You were doing real well. I'm sorry, but it's the condition that if you know, I've allowed you once, twice, but I'm like a second. Allah very thick. Now, a very good attempt, mashallah, almost there. Walid? Similar? So you're one as well. Prohibited to you for marriage, you deserve it anyway, Bilal. Prohibited to you for marriage is your mother, your daughter, your sister, your father's sister, your... <laughs> I'm only saying your mother's sister, your, your brother's daughter, your sister's daughter, your foster mother, your foster sister, your wife's mothers, your stepdaughter, those who've been wives to your sons and two sisters in wedlock in the, the same and one time except that which has passed. These are the prohibitions. Thirteen prohibitions. Thirteen. And all these, you are mahram to them. Meaning, these ladies, you are not allowed to marry. And every single lady that you are not allowed to marry, you are mahram on that lady. For example, the mother likewise means the grandmother and the great-grandmother. The, sister, the daughter means the granddaughter and the grand granddaughter and so forth. The sister whether half or full. The father's sister which is the paternal aunt. Likewise, your grandfather's sister. The mother's sister which is the maternal aunt. Likewise, your grandmother's sister. As for the, your niece which is from your brother. Likewise, your niece's daughter. Likewise, on the other side, your niece's daughter again. As for the fosterage, in Islam plays a major role and it's counted like a blood relation. Therefore, just as blood relations, for example, prohibit your mother's sister and your mother's uh, mother, likewise, your foster mother's sister and your mother are forbidden for you as well. Did you understand this? Inshallah, any questions will be left after, after the lesson, inshallah ta'ala. And this table of prohibited degrees, if we look at it, is usually accepted among all nations, among all people, except in minor detail. Alhamdulillah, now you know who you cannot marry. What does a man or lady, but first a man, look for when he marries? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us in a hadith that a lady is married for four things. Her wealth, her family status, her beauty, and her religion. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us, فَضْفَرْ بِذَاتِ الدِّينِ تَرِبَتْشَتَاكِ Take the one that is righteous, religious, and your hands will be saved. In other words, you will not be a loser. And another narration, he mentions that the pious lady is the one when you command her, she obeys you. When you look at her, she pleases you. When she speaks to you, she is truthful. And when you are absent from her, she safeguards herself and her and your property. And as we can see, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laid great stress in righteousness, piety and faithfulness as the main criteria in the choice of a life partner. And as we all know, subhanAllah, how many people today, when they first are interested in marriage, the only thing they look at is her beauty. That's all they look at. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us, whoever marries a lady for her position or power, Allah but will increase him in humiliation. And whoever marries a lady for her beauty, another narration, her wealth, 
Allah, but we increase him in poverty. So we do not look at only that, dear creatures. We look at the path, the guidance, the advice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed on the tongue of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahi, you never ever go wrong. If a lady looks for a righteous husband and a man looks for a righteous wife, he will never go wrong. And this is proven. How many arbitrations is due to this? This problem that a man married a lady only because of her look or her power or her money. And like was a lady married that person for such reason. Tayyib, now you have found your wife that you are allowed to marry. What's your next stage? What should we do? Do you call her up and say, look, I am interested in, interested in you. Let's go for a cup of coffee. Or let's go for, to a movie. Or let's go to a drive-in. Or let's go down Dulles Point or Bondi for a bit of a talk. What do you do? You go and seek a hand from her guardian. And you make sure that you see her. And she sees you. As our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to us in a hadith collected by Abu Dawood and Imam Ahmad is the hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah that Muhammad said to us, whenever one of you wants to seek a hand in marriage, let him see that which satisfies him to marry her. Let him see that which satisfies him to marry her. When Jabir heard this hadith, who's the narrator, he said, I used to hide from my wife until I saw that which satisfied me, so I married her. So I married her. And this must be done whereby the guardian is present. A man, a lady is never ever allowed to sit together if they're strangers to each other in one room. Why? Because Muhammad وسلم, said to us, you never leave a man and a woman in the same room except there is a third person and the third person is shaitan. And if we see in the West today that when a man or lady is uh, thinking or willing to marry a man or a man a lady, they date each other for how long? Weeks, months, years, tens of years, on the pretext that they want to know their common interests better. Any one of them, for example, gets a child, or two, or three, or twenty children, and yet he has not known the common interest yet. And at the end of this time, uh, uh, you're not good enough, see you later. Or she says to him, chucks him out of the house. And she's got a bundle of children from him. And they still have not known their common interest. You know, they lived together independently all this time, but mashallah, their common interest was still not known. And when it was known, I mean, after how many children? And how many years together? Both parties must agree to this marriage. It's a condition of marriage that both parties must agree to the marriage. In other words, a lady is not allowed to be forced in that marriage, nor is a man allowed to be forced in that marriage. But generally we have it on the other side, where the ladies are forced into a marriage they do not want. And that agreement must be under Islamic law, meaning you cannot say to a lady, if you're a guardian, you better say yes or I'm going to belt you. Or you warn her, it's happening, Wallah, it's happening, it's sad. The guardians warn uh, their responsibility. Who's the, the lady? You better say yes when the sheikh comes, otherwise you're in big trouble. This is haram and it's invalid. We do not force anyone into marriage. This is a lifetime thing here. A lady came, a virgin girl, to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, my father married me against my will. He allowed her to repudiate, in other words, to refuse, decline, reject the marriage. So she had the choice, which testifies to the fact that no lady is allowed to be forced into any marriage, and a marriage contract must be must be by two agreements, which is the lady and man, not only the man, she has to give full consent in order for that marriage contract to be valid. Likewise, an important article of the marriage is the dowry. And a lot of ladies are being oppressed here by the dowry. And a dowry is a gift from the man to his potential 
or future wife. And this dowry could be of any value which is agreed by them too.